Hey, what's up? Welcome to the show. My name is Nanaya Radio. I got you guys. This is Road to VGMA 24. This is One Play Africa, One Play Radio. If you miss the show on YouTube, you can get it on Audio Man at One Play Africa Radio. Download it. Listen, this is an exclusive podcast. This is the Road to VGMA. We have all the news that you need to know. We have four one ones. We'll do three segments. We'll try and get it within 10, 15 minutes so you guys can always play back. From now to the May May 13th, we will, I will be sharing with you a lot of information, bars, gossip, jazz, and everything. So that's my team producing me, Emmanuel and Irene Norma. I hope this time around we are recording because the last time I filmed this, I I missed out on the intro. But hey, I'm doing this with TV Kionipa and Roland of Roland Report. Um, every event, every um, concern, every every wally conversation. This guy has some information on there. There's a big conversation about um, Shatawali and as to why he wants Ghana Music Awards but to come to his house and have a conversation, have dinner before he joined the scheme. And also there's a conversation about Shatawali feeling neglected, left out, or disappointed or betrayed by his brother, Stoneboy, for joining the scheme. We'll have a conversation on that in other episodes. But for today, three things we're going to do. We're going to do fire or flop, what's new, and the big conversation. So let's start off like this. You're welcome. It's there. You know what it is. Subscribe, turn the icon on, the bell on, so that you can get everything that we do. If you go on audio mark on our podcast on Spotify to do the same thing, subscribe to our podcast and get more, 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 more from us. First topic. This is huge. Vodafone Ghana Music Awards announced their nominees, and everybody was excited as usual. It came with the hula baloo and the controversy and everything that came with it. And then he said, oh, we're giving one-week ultimatum. So I want to find out. Did the one-week ultimatum work? What did it do? What did it solve? Did it work? Maybe it didn't. Maybe it did. But I have some news on that as well. I will, I will tell you. Also, there's a big artist in Ghana who fans claim. I actually walked into a conversation with, between four fans claiming that one big star in Ghana has overgrown the award scheme. He should be taken out because they feel like Charlie, he's one artist of the decade he's done everything so make live on how true is that it, it, does it even make sense so we, we will look at it as well and then we'll have a conversation about the, the nominations as well stay with us roland how okay. are you what's up um, thank you hello <laughs> what's up I'm, I'm good how about you i'm good anyway this whole setup was put together by myself right Tried, right? Tried, mm-hmm. tried, tried, tried. Because I like, I like new things. I tried. I think you were picking the guys that put this up. When no, I did the setup myself, but the production and everything is uh, Emmanuel and Production team, not yeah. the setup team. Okay. Yeah, I did, I did the setup. Like oh, you course. can hire me for for, for set designing and mm. right now. <laughs> but now we're too winning, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So let's let's go like this. So this is the way to VGMA. Today is, I don't know when you're going to watch the show, but if you're watching it, maybe on later after. This, but we were filming on 29th of March. It's like a few days, and then we are into April. So let's say every day we have a month and 13 days to go. Yeah, of course. What do you guys think? Do we have a buzz in town? Are we, are we picking up? I think um, one thing the VGMA does and does very well is that there's always a reason to have a conversation about the VGMA every year. Because ahead of the nominee announcement, I, I was like, no, this year, like last year, the vibe around the VGMA was not too loud. But as long as, or as soon as the nomination list drops, there are artists. This year, it's still just for to do all the <laughs> doing all the promotions for the artists. Big, big, big chance, I think. We will talk about your, 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 your issue. Big chance, I think. Yeah. Also, on this show, we're going to mention Vodafone a lot. So please, Vodafone Ghana. We are going to give you guys 200,000 people to go and buy your SIM card. We're going to mention Vodafone, Vodafone, Vodafone. My number is 020. It's there. 020 my Vodafone. Yeah, my, my Vodafone number is 0240 798744. Uh-huh. Because we're going to mention you guys as well. So we're going to give you guys a big promo. So... Yeah, let's talk. I mean, let's have a conversation. Yeah, you're saying something. Yeah, so as I said, it's like whenever the, the, the list drops, that buzz or that conversation that gets people who are not even following the scheme 
to, to be noticed that, oh, the video is coming up, has already started this year. But before that, it wasn't. There was some, well, I didn't even know when the nominations were open, people to file and all. But as soon as the list dropped, as I said, every year you get somebody who is so unhappy, they are willing to carry the promotions of the video on their head and talk. And then the platforms are willing to engage such a person because, I mean, it's all part of the conversations of the VGMA and usually it happens when you get such a person and then they get a PR to join so that everything is sorted out. And I think with the bus, for now, with DJs, don't throw with Anula Samabedu and with uh, Robert Clark, they're back and forth on all the big media platforms. I think it's being catered for. But yeah. as to after the nomination passes, the hype that comes ahead of the main event, we'll see. Well. Yeah. Well, I think BGMA has become more or less like Untia Ubiti kind of situation. And the no punk out. Untia Kra Ubiti. Like, you would have no other choice than to just bump into a BGMA conversation or just chance on a BGMA conversation anyhow. And especially, I like how they use their activities to drive conversation. So it is not just about talking about the scheme anyhow, but in every conversation, you have a subject matter. Is it about somebody who missed out on the nomination or is it about you predicting who wins what in the nomination or in in the scheme or in the year and the review that is always what the vgma conversation has been about the only activity that i think has so far since its introduction has not gotten that kind of buzz whenever it comes up as the vgma for schools Mm. That is the one that I think amongst true. all the activities. True. So true, true, true. from the nomination, but, 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 but let me say this on record that VGM for schools last year to the Quinnipa happened to have hosted mm -hmm. a couple of them. And this of year, hopefully, we can get on the road again. So yeah. yeah. So 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 that that is one activity among the many activities part to the main event that I think the bars is always not as equal as the rest. But when you take the nominees announcement the how do we call it the nominees jam and uh, the main event these three uh, sectors has like always have that big buzz that big conversation around it because the nominees announcement for example one of the conversation would be which region is going to host it this year which artists are going to do it last year i think was in kufridia where some people even had issues of the fact that they were not built to perform and, and all these things gave us some more things to talk about about vgma so okay. what they say but i know some people would say the conversation or the buzz is not as huge but i i think that the buzz always comes with some form of announcement and there's a subject matter for you to discuss nice one okay so that was just by the way just imagine now we are coming to delve into a conversation so what's new let's start with this yeah let's look at first of all let me just do this by myself and then um my my, my guys will come in so New artist, a new artist nominee, um, Chief One has a new song about Toyota. And also Kwame Eugene, nominated for High Life Artist of the Year, also has a visual out for cryptocurrency. So you guys can go, can go and check it out. And also, there's a new boy called Vanilla. He has a song with Mr. Drew. He's doing very well. The song is doing amazing. You guys can go, so go check it out. What I want to find out from you guys is the one week ultimatum that the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards gave. See, Vodafone, I mentioned it again. Did it work? Would like did it, did it first of all did, did it even make sense? Did it work? Yeah, I think it's it does make sense because you know the the whole issue of award schemes in Ghana becoming kind of unpopular is is a huge conversation and every entity as far as awards organization is concerned is on its toes to make sure that people get to feel like they they are doing this for their best interest mm. so if you should give them a, a, a window for them to bring out their grievances because always it is more or less like um we we are doing it with the and the moment we put out some of these things it is more or less like we are imposing them on you no matter how you cry how you shout nothing can be done about it wait for next year when the new one comes maybe we can rectify it there but this is a situation whereby one week ultimatum has been given for everybody who thinks something was not done right. And in fact, this is an, it's a human institution and it is not, it is obviously prone to mistakes and errors. It can happen anytime, no matter how perfect the people or the organizers uh, are. So it is good. And if, if not for anything at all, I think it is also helpful because at least there's one thing that is going to be addressed. 
I remember during an interview on during the like during the weekend, the PRO that is Robert Clark. Yeah. We'll talk when, about him. when an issue when an, an issue of uh, J Bad came up, mm. he said the the Chatham House is going to release a press statement to that effect. So if not for anything at all, I know so many people raise their grievances and displeasure, but all the same, one person's own is going to be addressed, and perhaps it is going to go either in their favor or, or against their favor. Even so. If it, whether it is in their favor or not, I think definitely since they've been able to give that impression about the fact that they are doing this with the people, they are doing it in their best interest. I think so far it is good. It has been helpful. Nice thing. Yeah. To, to break. Yes. Break. The, 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 the one week ultimatum. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but I think it has also been something that has stirred up a lot of conversation. And my fear is that if after this period, there, there, there are some mistakes that will, uh, the VGM will rectify because people brought it to their attention through the one week ultimatum. Then it puts, for me, it puts a lot of problem, like it's quite problematic. Because, mind you, over the years, people have had tangible reasons. In fact, over the years, for the 24 years that they've done it, every year somebody has a reason to tell the VGM that this thing that you did wasn't right. But what has made the VGMA powerful has been the ability to stand on its feet and then move forward with it. Now, if you open this thing up and then people come and then they give you the reason and then you go and check your facts and you realize that, yes, you made a mistake and the people are right and you rectify it, it means that all the people that came after you, that came after you the years back and gave reasons why that something might have been wrong, you know, it means that they are right to call you out on certain things. And it starts the repetition. These are all the things they said. Some of them, right? Now, it, it, it cast, if I had won something that was so controversial and then the BTM stood on its feet and gave it to me, it makes me wonder if there was a one week ultimatum, would there have been a title holder then? Whatever the case, they keep saying it's only a food that has it to the mind. Yep, you are here with us on One Play Africa Radio and One Play Africa on YouTube, One Play Africa Radio on Audio Mac, Spotify, Apple Music Podcast. Listen to it. Play back. This is the road to VGM. My name is Nana Yari. I got you guys from, from now, May 13th. I'm hanging out with Roland and Tilly, having a conversation. We are, we, are, we are going to do the big conversation, but before that, I walk into a conversation in one restaurant, four fans, discussing that Sarkodie has outgrown the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards because he has won everything. He's done everything. I want to find out. One, one minute, guys. Don't, one, one minute. Do you think Sarkodie has outgrown Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Do you think an artist can, can outgrow an award scheme? Okay, so um, I don't think Sarkodie has outgrown the VGMA scheme or any award scheme. In fact, um, for, for an artist or for, for a musician, I don't, I don't think it is, it is like that because it depends on the artist's vision at a particular point and what he wants. So we have so many examples of artists saying okay at this particular point in time i don't want to be part of this game we have so many situations like that both local and international so for for people to say sir house outgrown i don't think it is because he if unless he says he don't he doesn't want to be part other than that there's nothing like an artist has outgrown a scheme mm -hmm. the the moment he says he wants to be part is he eligible in the year under review if the answer is yes then he should be part. So I don't think he is. Do you think it's okay, worrying, scary that young people are saying that Sarkoide has outgrown that was Kim in Ghana? The, the, the scariest thing about what she said is the fact that young people think they have an opinion about everything. Because how do you say an artist that is just like 10 years or a little above 10 years how has has overgrown a certain scheme that is the biggest scheme and the biggest validator in their homeland. Mm. So are we saying that Beyonce has outgrown the Grammys because she, she is the most Grammy awarded uh, musician right now in the world. So the next time, are you saying Beyonce will not file for nominations or Beyonce's project will not be considered because she has won so many times so she is bigger than the scheme now? It's not possible. There's no limitation to creativity. Art has no limitation. Some people start their art journey at 70 years and they go as Sarkodie is not even, I'm not sure it's even 40 years. And if Sarkodie wants to take two years break and come back or decides to gas up the way he has gassed up for the last, how many realize Sarkodie has gassed up? So, <laughs> he just turned 28. So, 
<laughs> or whatever the case, stop a beer unless he decides that I don't want to do this music thing again. But as long as he's in it, there's no limitation. Unless, of course, they are saying there's another face of the PTMA or another face of our, our skin that, that, that brings together veteran musicians and then awards them another level. If not, South Korea can come back with artists of the decade for the next 10 years and he'll still be eligible to be in the VGNs. I agree with every, everything that you have said. I think an artist is not bigger than, cannot outgo an award scheme. I mean, hey, it's not even a co Afro conversation. My, my, my two cents is this. I got worried because these were young people. And so if they can say this about South Korea, I'm looking at what they can say about their fellow artists in their age group in the next five or ten years to come. Do we have to grow artists quickly? Do we, do, we, do we want to always push artists out of their business so quickly? What do we gain from doing that? Is it jealousy? Is it greed? Is it envy? I don't know. But hey, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's have a big conversation right now. This one is a, is a big combo. Uh, okay, so um, let's, let's move on to the big conversation right now. There has been some concerns raised with regards to how the project lead for Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Mr. Robert Clark goes about his business. Some say he's over, over, overdoing it. Some are saying he's being too professional. I don't know what that means. And some too are saying that, oh, he's being cocky. The way he handles some of the conversations when it comes up on radio, on TV, is like Charlie. He's, he's just throwing it around. I want to find out. Being a project lead for such a huge scheme, does it come easy to manage over? 30,000, 40,000 people coming at you. How do you have, what's, what is, what is the criteria for behavior when it comes to <laughs> being a project lead for such a huge, you know, because I'm on a platform on WhatsApp and it's a huge debate. I mean, people are defending him. People are saying, hey, he's just, he's just doing his job. Allow the young man to do his job. Some people are saying, yes, but he's throwing it around too much. Is he throwing it around too much? Is he overdoing it? Is he under, underperforming? What's happening? Whoever says that um, Robert Carr is overdoing it and being cocky, probably never met George Quay's era. George Quay is the one that writes a letter to an artist and tells you that you're error that you are high. Are you the, you go and take your own catalog and see if you are the same level of artist. <laughs> Listen, I don't think Robert Carr is not up in the whatever. He has the right amount of cockiness. He has the right amount of humility for what he is doing because. I've been on platforms with him and I've seen him on certain platforms where when you say something and he knows that you are right, he doesn't throw his weight. He just tells you, oh, yes, we'll put that into consideration. Thank you for bringing it up. Which means that they know that this thing, it is not cast in stone. Mm -hmm. There are bound to be mistakes. And at certain point, he needs the amount of cockiness he has to defend himself because, mind you, Ghanaians always want to prove they are better than somebody. Even in a common conversation. Agree. Somebody always wants to prove that that's what they, I they, are the, and they are the sharpest, they are the smartest, and they always want to make you feel like you are not right for the thing you are doing or whatever you are saying is wrong. So at that point, if he has to put humility aside and put you in your place, I agree totally. But the problem with Robert is that he says it and he wants it to be accepted the way he says it. Mm. And the clarity he doesn't give in certain things is what makes it problematic. Like just say like there's a conversation and he says that's how it's just it's just like that you just can't say it just, you just what an artist has done a project you are telling the artist you have not been even though you meet all the criteria you still didn't make it into it and somebody is asking you that that artist is asking you also what can i do that is just how it, you just do you just saying because you have acknowledged in that same instance that this project meets the criteria it's good and then you just say it's just and they want to start a conversation and you think that the artist will be happy accept because you are the peer so once you said it's just it goes but if that bit of him that clarity it comes i think he has the right amount of quirkiness professionalism humility for the job and those who think otherwise never met so quick wow really? um i think for somebody to even say he is being too professional that i think he should even take it as a compliment because for somebody to say you are being too professional, then it means you are doing your job very, very well. Yep. Which, which is what would drive somebody to say, to make that particular comment. Because I have followed Robert Clark through so many conversations as far as BGMA is concerned. And I can say that he has that temperament. 
I like how he's able to get himself in the mood to respond to people. In the mood. Yes, he's able like when you come in hot or when you come in very hostile, he knows how to to ascend like there with you and give it to you. When you descend with that low tone, he always has that way of switching back. You know, usually Robert Clark is that cool calm yeah, let's say calm then. but when you flame up he, he also has a way of meeting you fair and square and i think so far that is one of the hallmarks of being a good project lead and so so far i think he's doing it very well because it is just about people trying to discredit you and robert clark also poses as the person with the fact the person who seemingly has the final seat because the board and the whole charter house entity cannot come and respond to anybody so he is the one that holds the master key, the fact. So when he says this is A, make sure you accept this is A. Don't try and come and ask because for whatever cry that you have, if you like, gather at the independent square and hold the crying party. It will still not hold. This is what we are doing. So for that particular aspect, I think he is doing it very well. And like Tilly said, if they think Robert is so hard or very snobbish or whatever, then they never met George Quay because George Quay. Hey, even the working self can tell you something. <laughs> Let's move on to the other big combo and then we can wrap up with Fire of Love. This week's Fire of Love is crazy. And don't forget this episode one of Road to VGMA. I'm, I'm hanging out with Roland and Tilly and it's, it's been exciting. I like it. Let's do one more conversation and we wrap up. Let's talk about the whole Vodafone Ghana Music Awards nomination list. Which one got your attention? When the list came back? Oh, yeah. We've like they announced the thing. Which one? Which one? Which one were you like? Oof! This one there is fire. Well, I think the artist of the year and um, the new artist of the year. I think okay. these two categories were the one that got me like hooked onto the whole nomination announcement because of the people in there. For us, it were some people think Joe Metal there. It is his best right. Mm. I think I, I can care. <laughs> mm, Joe Metro, it is his best right. Like, even at a point, I remember, is it somewhere last year when he said he himself he doesn't, he doesn't know, know what he what did. If I tried to see me, he said, like, Hey, I hear Juma, but this is like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, I asked myself, Okay, but then perhaps the scheme is seeing something maybe we are not seeing because most of the, the categories are technical. And in that light, he can get himself nominated when he does certain things right. You know, it is a scheme. <laughs> it is a scheme. This is the voice of, of Wallet. So, yes, it is this a is scheme. A, you see how the hand moves? The hand moves. I mean, if, if you are listening if, to the podcast, you, you know, see, but the hand do this. If you know what a scheme is, you know how to scheme things. Like, go through stuff, pass all the corners to get what you want. That is what it is. So, since it is a competition... I am not, yes, as much as I am surprised he's there, I am not so surprised because, hey, it is a competition and in a competition, your mother is not there, your father is not there. Anybody can do anything to enter. So, these two categories, that is what I'm looking at. The new artist of the year and uh, the substantive, like, the big one, the artist, artist of, of the year. I mean, we'll, 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 we'll get into the each one, like mm. maybe like later on as we as we do. Which one? When the nominees? What, how how did you feel first of all? Like when how? The list yes. Came did you feel the the, the chills as hey, Ghana music? I was nomination list. No, part. no. This year I wasn't expecting much. In fact, if it was if there's ever a year I was hoping BGM would skip be this year because last year there wasn't enough hit songs and from the way things are going this year, if things don't happen in our ecosystem for some songs to push through and some hit to now nah, I, I don't foresee the scheme being exciting next year because guess what if there's enough music in the space and there are enough on the competition is keen enough to want to be participated like to be part of it but if it is not there isn't enough uh, to go around i feel like you Charlie, but try, 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 it won't be exciting but i think what the parts the nomination that i i liked or oh, got me excited was the best rap performance i don't know if that thing is open to public to also put or it's so technical so it's mm. simply based on the board and the academy mm. but if it is open to why many academy now when the grammy ceo came to ghana he says the grammy academy is is 
It's your own colleagues and friends. Right. So if you want to know who the academy right. members is, look to your left, look right. to your right, you I'll, see them. I'm telling you. They are there. They are there. I'm telling you. But I think it was the best rap performance part that I felt like, yeah, this is it. This is it. Because as I said, there are other categories. They had the real food. It wasn't enough. So those that stood out really stood out, <laughs> which is why the actual is stopping there. It was he stood out. Which is why Dow Flat one hit is getting a lot of nominations because he stood out last year. Sheriff has almost nine nominations. Yeah, that's what I'm wow. saying. So that's, the competition was good. not so tight. If you worked and you got your hit, you you would dominate the thing so badly. But if the competition was tight and there were lots of hit songs in it, I'm not going to still. But the rap performance, you know, mm. because that one is not about the popularity of the song or the fan or whatever it is. It's about the performance of the rap. And the people that are on there and the songs that were selected for the rap, I'm telling you, nobody came as a two. The lyrical will be quite a 10 minutes. If you combine all, <laughs> okay, if you combine the others together, they are verses that. I will say a poem. We have to, we have to wrap up. For me personally, I, I think that I was a bit um, disappointed with the high life part of the whole, the whole thing, the high life song, high life artist, because I feel like our people. Not because of the whole Afrobeat high life, Buhar. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. That's someone's agenda. I'm not part. But I think that, for some funny reason, our boys are not able to distinguish the high life production from the Afrobeat. I don't know whether we are. We as an industry, we are to be blamed, or because you hear a certain production, you think, oh, this is this should be high life. The person will say, no, it's not high life. It's Afrobeat. So that's where I was a bit disappointed. Because I feel like it's a lot of songs that could have gone into the high life song of the year. But the artist maybe said it's Afrobeat. And because you can't blame them, they can't really, really distinguish between the production, the sequence, and you know, chord progression for Afrobeat and high life. But anyway, that's a that's a conversation for another, another episode. We are wrapping up. It's time for fire of or flop. Please don't talk plenty. It's, if it's fire, cool. If it's flop, it's flop. Fire of Love, DJ Azonto went head to head with the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, the whole board. And he even said on Teleki and Nipa's show that he wants to even go and sleep at Charterhouse. Fire of Love. Flop. Fire of Love. Fire. That's it for the first episode of Road to VGMA. My name has been Nanaya Radio. Emmanuel is actually got this camera. So let me take that. Let me take it again. That's it for this week's show. My name has been Nanaya Radio. And I hope you enjoyed our conversation. This is Road to VGMA. I hang out with Roland. Of Roland reports, I don't know what he's always reporting on. Sometimes, and if you see some girls, they ma, they ma, they ma thing. I guess he has a new song called Duna. I sometimes see Roland post something like that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll catch you on the flip side. Drop your comments below, and you know, I know, you know, we love you so much. And drop your comments, share your opinion. You can throw your insult. I'll see you guys on the flip side. This is Nanaya. Your love. One play, one play, one play. Add class to your music.